European leaders have sealed a deal on an unprecedented 750 billion euro coronavirus recovery fund. After four days of heated talks, leaders finally agreed on the details of loans and grants to be given to countries hardest hit by the pandemic. For the first time ever, the aid will be financed by borrowing. Of the 750 billion euros in question, 390 billion will be in the form of grants. The remaining 360 billion euros will be disbursed in the form of cheap loans. Now, it's a compromise that satisfies the demands of fiscally conservative countries. Good morning, everyone. We did it. Europe is strong. Europe is united. These were the words the delegates have been working towards. A deal has been done and the wrangling can stop. Everyone can go home some kind of winner. Relief was visible on their faces, despite the masks. Charles Michel, EU Council Chief, Francis Emmanuel Macron and Ursula von der Leyen, Commission President, plus standing tallest of them all, Mark Rutte from the Netherlands. He had led the group who'd limited the grants and made them conditional. What I was aiming for, and I think we have achieved, is a emergency break. An emergency break at the level of the European Council uh, to be able uh, to enforce um, the reforms in member states uh, if they are not taking place against uh, the programme that particular member state uh, had agreed with the European Commission. Member states like Viktor Orban's Hungary. Bad blood between the two men may remain. Despite that and underlying problems that haven't gone away, Merkel and Macron say the EU works. After a very long session, we have reached a good conclusion, and I am very happy about that. Europe has shown that it is prepared to take new paths in what is a very special situation. I believe that is necessary. Extraordinary events, and in this case, that's the pandemic that has reached us all, demand extraordinary new methods. The whole thing may have been close, but Macron says the deal they reached will help all 27 EU nations. Je suis convaincu que ce plan, ce budget, plan, budget sont de, de nature à répondre aux défis sanitaires, et économiques et sociaux qui sont aujourd'hui les nôtres dans chacun de nos pays. It was a long fight. Four days of negotiations brought significant divisions to light, but the deal stands and now everyone can go home. DW correspondent Marina Strauss is certainly not going home anytime soon. She joins me from Brussels with more. Marina, a fist banging French president, heated arguments, even a walkout. A tumultuous few days to get this deal. Pierre, it's the first time in EU history the EU is taking up mutualized debt. So this is a big deal. This has been a taboo before. So it clearly took a couple of arguments, also a couple of fights and a compromise. Um, it took a while to, to find that compromise. Also, because we have two different, two very different perspectives on the issue. We have the countries from the south of Europe that have been hit hardly by the COVID-19 crisis and that have been suffering economically even before COVID-19 hit them. So they said, we want grants. And then we have the northern countries, the self-declared frugal countries like the Netherlands and Austria. They said, uh, we only want loans. At the beginning, they opposed to grants uh, and in the end, um, they found a compromise. But that took four days. But a lot of this aid that has been agreed upon is conditional, Marina. In fact, Dutch Prime Minister Rutte talked of an emergency break. How exactly will that work? Uh, at first, uh, the, the self-declared frugal states that are led by Mark Rutte, the Netherlands Prime Minister, wanted to have a right to veto. The idea behind it is that they wanted the, that the grants um, that are handed out to, to countries are have strings attached. So they wanted the countries to, to, to implement reforms. And now what he calls an emergency break is a watered version of this, a watered down version of this. It means that if a member state has a problem with how the money is used in another member state, he, uh, the, the member state can bring it to the, to the, EU, to the EU summit and they will 
discuss it, um, discuss it there. There's also another conditionality that has been a sticking, one of the major sticking points here, and that is the rule of law mechanism. Um, the question, if the money that is handed out will be attached to the rule of law. Uh, Hungary and Poland, two countries that have been facing accusation of violating the rule of law, have been strongly opposing this idea. And now they also find a sort of watered down version. And many critics, for example, the Greens here in the European Parliament say, this is, well, is a too, toothless mechanism. Marina Strauss with the details from Brussels. Thank you very much. Now, one of the biggest beneficiaries of this recovery fund will be Italy, receiving some 210 billion euros in both loans and grants. Stefan Grigoli is an Italian lawyer specializing in international commercial law, and he joins me now from Milan. Stefan, what is Italy going to do with the money? Well, hello, thank you for inviting me. Uh, yes, Italy is going to use this money. We hope that uh, Italy is going to use this money in a very appropriate manner and a good manner because uh, some weeks ago 60% of the Italians were against the recovery fund and now the situation a little bit changed. And of course uh, we have to look how the companies uh, see this uh, program and how the companies uh, will have uh, trust in these programs and uh, this depends a lot on how they have trust in their programs politicians in their politics and um, one of the major problems there will be the bureaucracy in Italy which is one uh, a major problem uh, the bureaucracy in Italy all the clients they tell us is one of the most complex systems in Italy and there we have to see how this will be managed speaking of uh, bureaucrats and politicians now Prime Minister Giuseppe Conte was adamant that Italy needed urgent financial support now it's come away with about 81 billion euros in grants and 127 billion euros in loans these are repayable is this the deal that Italy really needed uh, if the money is going to use uh, in the right manner and if it's going to uh, put in the right sectors which uh, have been also uh, discussed during the <coughs> epi uh, epidemic, uh, during the last three months, then it will be uh, a real uh, good uh, thing for Italy. Uh, there have been a lot of decrees in the last uh, months and uh, the problem is that there are no implementation regulations for these decrees. And now we have to look how this will be uh, coordinated, how the coordination is between this uh, decrees and the new uh, national reform program, which also Italy has to submit to Brussels. Italy is the only state which did not has still submitted this uh, program to Italy, uh, to, to Brussels. And uh, now we have to see how this uh, money will then be utilized. And uh, if this money is going really in the sectors which are particularly affected by, by COVID, as the tourism sector, the automotive sector, and the steel industry. Uh, there is no denying how much Italy has suffered through this uh, COVID-19 pandemic, Stefan. As an Italian yourself and president of the Italian-German Lawyers Association, do you feel Europe has come to the aid of Italy when it needed Europe the most? Uh, yeah, I, I think that, that, that's a good... Um, they should need it. And um, I, I think that um, all the critics which are now um, given up and uh, which are raised up by the Italian um, <coughs> association, main Italian association of, uh, of uh, enterprises and of companies, uh, we, we have to look how it, this will be um, uh, developed. And uh, one of the major representatives um, of Confindustria uh, said that this new program is a so-called Piano Minestrone. As you know, Minestrone is one of the most uh, known vegetable soups in Italy. Right. And um, we have to look how this will uh, fit into the Italian uh, legal situation uh, and, uh, of course, political situation. Hopefully it doesn't leave a sour taste in the mouth. Stefan Grigoli, thank you very much for speaking to us. Thank you to you.